Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. Myanmar's minority Christian Chin group is mounting an insurrection against the military dictatorship that seized power in 2021. Our reporter Antoine Vedier has been filming with the Chins, who are taking on Myanmar's military might with small arms, huge courage, and basically little else. Antoine, welcome to the program. Tell us more about this people, the Chins. Yes, the Chins are one of the 135 ethnic groups that live in, in Myanmar. And as you say, in a, in a Buddhist country, the Chins are Christian, Protestant, and they are for long uh, discriminate, discriminated and marginalized. And so back in the 80s, at the, end, at the end of the 80s, they have created their own army, the Chin National Army, to fight the military power because uh, Myanmar was already a military dictatorship at that time. And then during the democratic transition in 2015, they have signed the ceasefire with uh, Aung San Suu Kyi. Uh, but after the coup d'etat uh, on the 1st of February 2021, they have decided to fight back. And this is their story uh, of resistance that I tell you in this documentary. Antoine, thank you very much. We'll have more from Antoine after his report from Myanmar. These are fighters from a war that the world has forgotten. Among the ruins of his hometown, Officer Sanguk Dong is now leading his men to the front line. If the military soldier, the junker, see us, we will be shot. We need to run. Okay, you ready? Okay, okay come on. This former theology student now leads a battalion of almost 600 rebels, or members of the Chin ethnic group, fighting against the Myanmar military junta, which has been in power in the country since a military coup in February 2021. The junta may become, it's not clear, but if they come, we will shoot, we will kill them. We are ready to die for Tantang. Uh, this is our town. This is where we grow up. We will fight for democracy. Myanmar has been embroiled in civil war for almost two years, mainly fought behind closed doors. Foreign journalists are not welcome in the country. And in order to meet these armed groups fighting the junta, we have to travel for hours down long, difficult roads before crossing this river, the edge of the conflict. Hello. Welcome to Chinland. Welcome to Burma. Myanmar's roughly 500,000 Chins live in the poor and remote mountainous region between India and Bangladesh. After the end of the British occupation, they were among the 135 ethnic groups officially recognized in the country. The Chins were converted to Christianity at the end of the 19th century. In a nation in which 90% of the population identify as Buddhist, they became marginalized. <laughs> the Chins have been fighting for autonomy and leading an insurgency for the past 30 years. The coup d'etat on the 1st of February 2021 ended 10 years of democratic rule in the country. The Chins were the first to break the ceasefire and take up arms against the ruling military junta.
In the space of a few weeks, hundreds of young people across the country answered the call and came to join the CNA, the Chin National Army. Once their training is complete, the young recruits of the CNA are deployed to the strategic town of Tontlong, the front line. We're going to patrol up to the hospital. On the way, follow my orders closely and take care where you put your feet. We don't know what the situation is like, so remain alert and hold your positions. Led by 22-year-old 2nd Lieutenant Ung So Lin, the group is patrolling an area recently taken back from the junta at great cost. It's important to make sure there are no more enemies around who could try to retake this zone. We have to check every nook and cranny of the perimeter we control. That's how we will win. The unit has to secure the land around this hospital. There are loads of mines around here. Some are over there. This area has been bombed over a hundred times by the junta these past few months, indicating that the Myanmar army is desperate to retake this strategic position. After winning the battle for Tantlong Hospital, Chin forces took control of more than 70% of the town. I'm sad because I lost friends here. I feel sadness, but also anger. I'm not here for vengeance. What I want is to defend my land and my people. Even if some of us might die, we're all ready to sacrifice ourselves to defend this place. We will go right to the end. We'll fight. After more than two years of civil war and daily bombings, Tantlang is now a ghost town, totally emptied of its residents. But in some of the liberated areas, a few of them have dared to venture back among the ruins. Sung, his wife and daughter, have returned for the first time to the neighborhood where they once lived. Oh, that was the house of Biak Uk's grandmother. Only the stairs are left. The fire has burned all the houses. <laughs> That was a house. It's completely burned down. 
All the remains are the foundation of the new house we were building. Everything else has been destroyed. This is a place where we lived happily, with our children, our family, our friends. Seeing this place and the land where we lived reduced to ashes gives me great pain. I hate the army, our enemies, so much you can't imagine. I don't have any words. We hate them. We hate them. They killed innocent people, destroyed so many homes. We'll never forgive them. The family left in August 2021, six months after the coup d'etat, when the Myanmar army entered the town and started to attack civilians. Two years later, war still rages in the streets of Tantlong. We were terrified and feared for our lives. They bombed us. They fired guns at us. We didn't feel at all safe in Tantlang, so we left with all of our family. It had become impossible to live here. The roughly 12,000 residents of Tantlong all fled, and dozens of young soldiers were forced to leave their comrades behind at the front. In defense of their town, their land, and their democratic ideals, some lost hope, others parts of themselves. The wounded are treated at this makeshift clinic. Uh, we have to do amputation. Within this month, uh, we have done six people amputation. Our civilians. So there are uh, there are so many people uh, like uh, young men and women without legs and uh, arms. So I want to cease this war as soon as possible. Sam Sung is the youngest of all the wounded soldiers here. This 19-year-old was hit on his first mission at the front. A mine killed several of his comrades. I lost a leg, but I don't have any regrets because I lost it fighting the junta. I lost it for my land and for my people, so I don't regret anything. Even if I can no longer go to the front, I will continue to fight from here. I will take part in this war as long as the junta are in power. These young fighters will no longer go to war, but all here believe they're taking part in a revolution. They now hope to continue operating behind the lines for the Chin National Army. And Antoine Vedier, our reporter, is still with us. Antoine, thank you so much for that insight into what's happening in Myanmar. It's, it's six months uh, on uh, from when you were filming. What's the situation on, on the ground now? Well, the war is still going on. You know, when I was in Myanmar last spring, uh, the Chins told me that they have control over 70% of their territory, and it's still the case today, which means that they haven't registered any big win nor any big loss. Uh, it's easy to explain it. Uh, it's due to the rainy season. It was the monsoon in South Asia. And so it was, it was very difficult uh, for both uh, the Junta soldiers and the Chi National Army to move around the mountains. But during that time, 
uh, the, the junta kept doing airstrike on the Chin territory. There was uh, almost uh, there was airstrike almost every day, and uh, I learned that uh, a few weeks ago. 12 young soldiers from the battalion that I filmed uh, in Tantlang were killed uh, by an airstrike, so the, the, the war is still raging. And Antoine, is there any sign at this stage of a resolution to this conflict? It's, it's very difficult to tell. You know, there are about uh, 20 ethnic armed groups in Myanmar, and most of them uh, have signed uh, a ceasefire with the junta. Only the Chins uh, in the West and the Karen and the Karenis in the East are still uh, fighting the junta daily. But uh, even if they have control over their territory, it's very difficult uh, to, to foresee how they could uh, overthrow uh, the, the junta and the military power, knowing that the junta can still rely on its uh, allies. Uh, Moscow and Beijing, China and Russia are still providing weapons uh, to the junta, and it's very difficult uh, to predict when and how this civil war could end. Antoine Verdier, thank you very much indeed. Antoine, uh, our report, you can, of course, see Antoine's report again via the website france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Do stay with us.